I tell you, I've been inundated uh, with emails about Tom McRae being on the show. Let me just uh, re read this one. Tom won't have to resort to cleaning windows uh, when he can be entertaining us melancholy types with his rousing pop ballads. And, uh, no, in all seriousness, I've been a fan of Tom's music for about eight years now. I saw him perform live in Los Angeles at the Hotel Cafe and was swept away with how the songs were even better live. Here's rapport with uh, Ollie, the witty lyrics and the sharp and only slightly drunk stage banter. Well, I loved every moment of it. And a really memorable moment was seeing him play at Shepherd's Bush a few years later. Now I'm a long way from home teaching English in South Korea and I still turn to Tom's music. It brings back fond memories of those gigs, the anticipation of hearing really good music live and just getting lost in the feet feeling that I was privy to a secret that no one else knew. Of course, the secret's been out for a while and I wish Tom the best of luck for the live appearance on your show. And that's from Saffron Chan. Yeah, exactly. Isn't that wonderful? That is. That I owe her money for that. Yeah. <laughs> We've had loads of support for you. And it's great to see you again. We were trying to work... Because I saw you at Guildfest. You got a huge tour bus. Yes. In a beanie hat. Yes. Because I remember thinking, who's this arriving in this very, very big tour bus? Um, and you did something for me then. But you also uh, did a session for us as well when we were up in Birmingham. And you came out for Ian Wills' session. Ian Wills, yes. Yeah, so it's been... Sort of yeah. two or three times over the years. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. yeah. So how are you keeping? Yeah, good, thank you. Good, you've yeah. been travelling here, there and everywhere. Yeah, um, off playing, um, touring a lot, as always, and uh, just kind of coming to the end of, uh, of a year of touring this, this last record. So where did your travels take you? We did, um, went all over Europe twice, um, and I say all over Europe, it's all the, the cold countries, because, you know, my music doesn't really work in the, <laughs> in the hot countries where people are happy. Um, so we don't get to go to Spain or Italy or Greece. Um, it's all Northern European high suicide rate territory. So. <laughs> do you like travelling? I do, yeah. I mean, you, you have to find a way of, of doing it and have an accommodation with, with the continual process of it. But I do, I've found that I do really like it and it does kind of keep you inspired as well. So you know. Where's the favourite place for songwriting or can it be absolutely anywhere? It can be anywhere. I mean, as I get on, I find that I need a little bit of time and space just to kind of let the adrenaline dissipate from touring and playing mm. live. But um, it, it literally anywhere where I can get a bit of headroom and, and you know, uh, make a noise without disturbing other people, because that's quite important. <laughs> you know? So for Alphabet of Hurricanes, where did you... Well, that was, that? yeah, that was written um, quite a lot on the road, um, and I was, I was I, sort of homeless and um, dividing my time between uh, L.A., New York, London... And I was staying in a few apartments here and there. And just every sort of couple of weeks, I'd, I'd hole up somewhere and, and try and write and see over the process of a couple of years if I could come out with an album that made sense, even if it wasn't just one place, you know. So. And what was all this... Because like? I remember reading about you um, buying all manner of instruments on eBay. I know, isn't that... I, this, is, this gets asked of me a little bit because it was one thing got put on my bio that anyone could find interesting about me is he bought stuff on eBay. You know, and who doesn't? Um, I did. I mean, I literally... I, I was... But was it just, You know the way you lock yourself into something sometimes and you become addicted to a certain site or whatever? Is that what you Still did? Still am, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, I, my phone goes off every day with 15 things saying you need to bid on this, you know, accordion that will never work, this guitar that will never go in tune and all these things. I end up with tons of junk, but I, I, I like that, you know. I'm, but you get excited when, the, when it's delivered. I do, yeah. Yeah, yeah and, and spend an hour figuring out that I can't play it and <laughs> don't have the patience to ever learn. But um, is there, there must be one thing that you've bought that you think, oh, so glad I put a bid in for that. I have a fantastic violin from China, um, which uh, it, it, I can't properly play. I, tune it, I play it by, by twisting the tuning peg to modulate the note uh -huh. up until the bridge flies out of the guitar and smashes something in the room, in, <laughs> at the violin rather. So I, 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 I'm into playing violin. I don't play it as well as Melissa. Melissa. Well, Melissa Ryan is here and uh, Ollie Cunningham as well. So what's the first tune going to be? Well, I'm just going to do this one on my own. Oh, uh, right. It's called Still Love You. I love this. <laughs> Walking hand in hand with my own ghost I've been many things I played a fool to catch a king And I've even been the man behind the walls Who hears your screams But I, I still love you Wolf on a black new moon 
shadow boxer at high noon I'm acting lost and so confused That my is clear You the one I've come to save Are you the water or the wave Am I drinking you down deep Or drowning here Beautiful, so beautiful. Quite different from the album because it's just you there. And um, a ukulele. And um, mm. yes, I still love you. Ukuleles, they're going to introduce them into schools now, aren't they? Because they're so easy for kids to carry. They're cheap. So much cheaper than um, spending on a proper sports education. Yeah, that's that's great. Can, well, there's uh, no sports. Yeah, <laughs> that's they've not got rid happen. of that and they've replaced it with ukulele. So we'll have loads of fat kids, but at least they'll be able to sing Play at parties. The ukulele. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> um, now, I've got lots of questions um, that people have sent in, so I might as well um, try and do some of them. All right. So, uh, what about sharing stage with Johnny Depp? Yes, um, I did. This is Andy Brown, who I think you might know, actually. Uh, I, I, at my stage, I think I know everyone that's written in. Um, I, uh, I did share a stage with Johnny Depp, but, but uh, only a cardboard cutout, because our cello player... Uh, his um, wife had given birth four days into the tour, so he had to go home. <laughs> and we were looking for things to have on stage because we felt slightly unbalanced. Okay. And uh, Johnny Depp seemed to capture the spirit of, uh, of the fantastic Ollie Krause. Slightly dissolute, good-looking, charming, um, not really with it. So I love Johnny Depp. And, in fact, I saw a trailer for him today. He's doing an, an action movie. How unusual. Yes, no. with um, Angelina... Uh, what's her name? Angelina Jolie. Jolie. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's um, that's going to be a clash of genes. And we should... apparently Vanessa Paradis, I don't know how true this is because it was newspapers, but she wouldn't let him do um, a bed scene with Angelina. She was a bit scared that he might fancy her too much. I've already offered my services. Cause, <laughs> to Vanessa. Know, I'm a body double for Johnny Depp. <laughs> oh, so for Johnny, they, can, yeah. they can shoot me from the back. <laughs> I can be, uh... um, and I, uh, post office cashiers, I've been asked <laughs> to ask you about. <laughs> Yeah, this is cashier a, number three. It, yeah, it's exactly. It's a running gag I have that um, because uh, I'm running a boutique operation, uh, which is the polite way of saying quickly running out of cash. That uh, is this I, your cottage industry yeah, where you make tea towels? And absolutely, stuff? do tea towels and, and aprons, and, and I send off all the merchandise and I cycle to the post office, and it's just kind of fun. You can either look at those things as as testament to the fact that you're not really quite as famous as you want to be. Or you or should think be. Or think it's well. a laugh. Or just think it's fun, yeah. and just think and be, be grateful that people are still buying into this and still helping. And and part of the, the gag at the post office is everyone's so annoyed with me because I have <laughs> so I much stuff, of stuff that I just end up singing songs <laughs> and they're kind of you know <laughs> singing popular hits of the day. Have you not thought that when you're in the queue at the post office mm. and you know they're doing cashier number nine and you're standing there and you're bored and you wished you'd take taken a packed lunch because the mm. queue is that long, you know that screen mm. that they have above. Now somebody told me that you can actually. Book yourself on there quite cheaply. And I could think it'd be quite quite good to do a little... Well, you could do a Can gig, you? couldn't you? I could. Absolutely. And you could actually watch yourself in the post office. And that, that, the demographic, people collecting their pension, that's about right <laughs> yeah. for me now. I think that's, that's people who started out ten years ago listening. <laughs> and uh, well, Paul McCartney's wonderful Christmas time. We should have asked you to record that earlier so that we'd have it for Christmas. Mm. Um, do you have any uh, plans to cover any other Christmas classics? Um, uh, I, I don't really. I mean, I was asked to do that one um, when I was in uh, LA. I was living out there, and a record company asked if I would do that, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, I, I tend to stick to my own songs simply because if you write them yourself, no one's got a clue if you're getting them really wrong. Yes, it's true. So isn't if you it? do other people's, they go, oh, shouldn't nobody sound can like argue that. with. Yeah, no, you know, change the words. I, I wrote it. It's <laughs> yeah, my choice. It's yeah. mine. I'll do what I want. Um, you, I did this many years ago. I went to a prison. Um, and I went with the Lotus Eaters, that's how long oh, ago. Yeah. But we went into Maidstone Prison mm -hmm. to do a gig. It was the first time anybody had gone into a prison to, to perform, and it was an incredible experience. But you went and did something else, didn't you? Yeah, I, I went up to, to Yorkshire to... It's actually a, a, a 
prison for sort of young offenders. Uh -huh. um, and uh, it was kind of offered to me by uh, someone who was a fan, but they were also involved with the, the Billy Bragg thing of getting guitars sent into prison so yeah. that the, the people had something to do and it was sort of part of a rehabilitation scheme and just, you know, some occupa occupational therapy. And uh, I went there because I, you know, I thought it's a great thing to do. I'll, I'll just go and see what the experience is like and found that it was one of the best things I've ever done, that the response and working with the kids who, I mean, they were kids, they're, they're up to 18 there, yeah. but whatever they've done, not my business, but they, they are still kids and they want to play and they want to express themselves and it was so fresh and pure and only about the music and a bunch of these kids hadn't even heard Beatles songs and they were sitting there with the Beatles songbook in front of them playing note for note perfectly Beatles wow. songs and singing along and it just blew my mind for everyone who complains about music and sees music as a vehicle for other things and fame, fortune, and and it just seemed so pure mm. that it kind of it stayed with me for a long time, you know. Well, that's been a terrific experience. And uh, Jamie Lumsden uh, sent that question in. Right, what are you going to do now? Uh, we're going to do uh, a song called Summer of John Wayne. I love this. Thank you. John Wayne getting older Real after real Playing old soldiers with old wounds You know how that feels In the summer of searching the underworld An arrow in my heel And the winding Speeding up of time won't change But I know you say Nothing good lasts forever Some things burn bright but burn themselves out to embers These were the conversations and small talk Steal my hours away And I gave away my best to strangers Day after day i uh -huh. 
Such a wonderful song that, The Summer of John Wayne, and uh, James agrees as well. Uh, <laughs> it's great to see you have the amazing Tom McRae on your show, and it would be great if you could play uh, The Summer of John Wayne, James Attenborough, and uh, Ollie Cunningham uh, there on keyboards, and uh, Melissa Reiner on the violin. So thank you very much indeed. Uh, now, um, if chatting about... Oh, yes, because you've moved to the country, haven't you? I have. I've, I've, You've after, up sticks. Up sticks. After 23 years of cities and London mainly, I've, I've moved to uh, the wilds of Somerset. Are you a country boy at heart? Um, I, I think I, was, I grew up in the country, so it's definitely in there. And I think it's, it's probably slightly a cliche, but you do tend to drift back towards your roots. And, you know, I was in danger of becoming a... A Daily Mail reader. If I stayed in London any longer, <laughs> with my my political attitudes were drifting slightly to the right, and I thought I don't want that. So um, I've moved into kind of Guardian territory again. So. And uh, are you having hens? Uh, or, what on a Raymond. nightly basis? Or <laughs> um, <laughs> she said you've got to get some hens. Uh, well, everyone around us does. You know, so you just go and get their eggs. Yeah, I mean, uh, really, it's so much easier stealing other people's stuff. <laughs> and are you going to return at the Hotel Cafe tour? Somebody's saying it's great that you don't mind sharing the stage, uh, sharing the limelight. No, I mean, that's you know, uh, the reasons for that is, is it's more fun. You, you get to share time and space and, and travel with, with good friends. Uh, I'd really like to. We're talking about bringing it back next year. I don't know that I'll be able to kind of be as involved, but I think it's such a good idea that we should try and bring it back, you know. And we must mention uh, Louise, um, who is always down the front at your Scottish shows, and her husband Alex has been in touch, so if you'd mention Louise, that would be great. Hello, Louise. And all of these I'm going to give to you because I can't possibly get through them. So they're your responsibility now, but thank you to everybody who did get in touch. Um, so do you uh, do work with other people, apart from, you know, doing your own stuff, Tom? Uh, not really, no. I mean, I don't... I don't... My door isn't being hammered down by people asking me to work with them, but uh, I, uh, I'm open to it, and I've tried a few things. I've I've done some writing sessions with some people in Sweden, and I tend to say yes to a lot of stuff, and the, the fact that not much of it has sort of seen the light of day doesn't mean it's not going on, but I'm not... Uh, I'm not averse to it. It just doesn't kind of hasn't happened right now. I mean, you go to all of these other places like Sweden or Norway or Holland or over to LA, mm. um, New York. Are you constantly searching out other people's music? Yeah, I am, and and more and more these days, uh, it gets easier to find. How shall I put this stuff that's outside the slightly wide but polluted pipe of the mainstream? You can find good stuff around it, and it's easier to do that. So I. I don't hold any truck with the fact that music is in a bad place. Music's in a great place. The industry's in a bad place. Yeah, but music's but better music's than it's ever been. Yeah. Place. And do you think that people can have longevity now because of the fact that we have got, you know, the World Wide Web, the net, everything, um, that people, all right, so maybe they haven't got the big deal, but they can still get their stuff out there? Because we're all aware of stuff that... Well, it's not played on the radio, is it? It's not in the charts necessarily, but mm. people still have followings and they can make a career out of it, can't yeah. they? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a kind of it's a, uh, two sides of the coin, really. The, the one side that says, well, the money's f harder to come by, but... Um, but in someone in my position... Not I, if you're I, selling tea towels. Well, not if you're selling tea towels and aprons. <laughs> but that's what people tend to complain about, and, you know, Metallicas of this world complain about that. But for me, if it wasn't for the fact that I could reach people through the so social media, that um, I wouldn't have the marketing budget and don't to, to be able to reach people, and, and yet I can find where they are now. I can winkle them out of their, of their holes. And, and for me, it's, it's a complete bonus. So I, I'm kind of glad that the, the way it's gone, it's helping artists like me kind of find an audience really. but I always think you should be much bigger than you are and I mean you were Mercury nominated weren't you um, and, <laughs> yeah and Brit nominated and Brit nominated yes. and I, you know I really really do why is it that some people are you know some people just get that push and that constant push and others don't it's so frustrating <laughs> it is but I mean it, it's always been that way and who knows why some things succeed you could, the, the lazy answer is if you throw a lot of money over a lot of time at something it, it has a better chance but even then you know, there's no guarantee. Some things connect, some don't, some work quickly, some take a, a lifetime. And, uh, you know, you don't ever get to choose that. You just go, well, if, if it's what I love doing, then you, you plough on and at some point hope that your luck and your energy coincide. But, you know, I've been doing this for enough time now to not really kind of 
dwell too much on that. You know. And uh, when will there be a follow-up to the Alphabet of Hurricanes? I'm giving up music now. I'm quitting. No, you know. yeah, He's going to work in the post office. Yeah, I am. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, you could have a little mobile one in the country. Well, I think so, yeah. We have a mobile library that comes through. Uh, and I was thinking, well, maybe I could hire that and go around the country doing gigs in the back of the you mobile could. library. Yeah. You could. Everyone, shh. Who oh, has doing, been yeah. doing gigs in libraries recently? There's been a thing, hasn't there, about gigs in libraries? So. Yeah, which is, which is a really good idea, because obviously so. they're in danger as well. So we need to kind of yes. find ways to, to get people into libraries and support those. So. And also different spaces for venues. There are lots of pop-up venues now, Yeah, which is such a good idea. I mean, there's something round here, and I can't, can't remember where it is exactly, but people are doing gigs in a laundrette yeah. when it closes, yeah. and they turn it into a venue. Yeah. And Which is great. Uh, there's a living room tour in the States where you can go and play literally people's living rooms and you can do it from state to state. Um, yeah. And, and uh, you know, it's, it is going back to its roots. It's kind of, it's, it's charming. Really. I rather like that. Yeah. Mm. Well, it's great to see you. And thank you for taking the time to come in and uh, pleasing all of your fans. What's the final tune going to be? Uh, it's going to be called Won't Lie. Thank you. Breathing out for the final time 
It's absolutely wonderful. Thank you. Have you got any dates? Uh, I'm married. <laughs> yeah, no, no. This is this is the very last thing I'm doing this year. All right. So. Okay. Oh well. Well, last time, but come back soon, won't you? Love to. Um, it was absolutely fabulous, and um, Ollie Cunningham there on the keyboards, um, Melissa Rana. Uh, violin absolutely gorgeous and um, well Tom McRae thank you very very much indeed great to see you again